Being in charge of an entire video game ecosystem is a busy job, but our next guest took time from his busy schedule to pay us a visit. Joining us here on Gamescom Studio, the head of Xbox himself, Phil Spencer. Hey, how's it going? Going well. Uh, it's good to have you here on the set to talk about Xbox. It's awesome to be here at Gamescom. I haven't been since 2017. Really? So, yeah. You, were you here last year? Nope. I skipped last year. I am, like, just jazzed. It's so cool to see everybody, and it's fantastic to be at Gamescom. I guess the biggest consumer game show on the planet. It's huge, yeah. Uh, you know what else is cool to see? That what? Starfield presentation that you and Todd introed a little bit ago. It's all Todd. Yeah. I was uh, there to intro Todd. Yeah. <laughs> That's my job. <laughs> you were the setup guy. I carry his bag, and I intro him. Uh, Starfield's a huge moment for Xbox, obviously. When is the last time Xbox has had a moment this big? <laughs> I think, every, well, I think everything, every month, every time we're doing something that uh, changes, hopefully enhances a customer's experience on Xbox is important. You think about big new IP that has launched on the platform. Um, I might go back to like, I'm just doing I'm like Gears 1. I don't know, like a game that is brand new, new IP, it's Todd's first game in the BGS team as part of Xbox launching on the platform. It's a big moment, and I'm proud that we were able to give them time um, and really, really happy with the results. You have a build, yeah, but you're not playing because you're working. I don't know what I'm allowed to say about it, so I don't want to break embargo. Have you booted it? I have turned it on. That's an embargo break. Like oh, no! <laughs> Well, I'm blacklisted now. Oh, well. Sorry, Todd. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is the talk of the town right now. Great game. You know, uh, this RPG comes along, kind of takes the internet by storm. Do you think it's set expectations for Starfield, or did it steal a little bit of thunder? Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with Starfield. Um, I mean, great games coming out, it's, it's a good thing for the industry. First, congrats to Larian and the team. I think it's like, what, a 97 rated game or somebody or something. As somebody who finished the original Baldur's Gate wow. and Baldur's Gate 2 and what was the expansion for Baldur's Gate 1, Forgotten Shores or something? Like, I'm a huge Baldur's Gate fan. Uh, and to see a team spend the time to make, I think, a true next iteration of a classic gaming franchise is always just great for the industry. Speaking of next iterations, you know, Skyrim came out, what, 12 years ago? Just did the anniversary edition, and it's been supported by an amazing modding community. Yeah. Has the same thought been put towards Starfield and supporting it into the future? Absolutely, and I don't want to disclose what the team has been thinking about, but obviously when you're BGS and you've seen the legs and the support that Skyrim gets, even today, right, when you look at what the modders have done, um, it went into the thinking about what Starfield should be and like proof will be out in terms of how people re receive the game. But our hope is that it is another game that's around a decade plus longer uh, later after it launches and people are still enjoying it. Uh, I think the last time you were in the hot seat was over Is this the hot seat right now? Yeah, the hot okay, seat okay. over here on uh, IGN. Uh, but you were at the, our friends kind of funny and doing the, the X cast around yeah. the launch of Redfall, yeah. which you know was obviously problematic at launch. Have any internal processes or procedures been changed to make sure that sort of uh, reaction or issue doesn't arise again? Well, we're always learning in everything we do, no doubt about that. I would say that, and I, I've shared some of this, but with Redfall, it was more of us not using our internal processes that were in place already, just because of when integration happened. I'm not using COVID as an excuse, but you know, we, we did close the ZeniMax acquisition and then everybody got sent home and it was just not as easy as maybe some of the earlier companies, uh, studios that we'd acquired in terms of integrating in our process, but that's all on us. So I'm, I'm not trying to deflect any of the, the criticism, um, but absolutely anytime we launch anything and we're, we're going to learn from the launch of Starfield, we're going to learn from the launch of Forza and we re reevaluate our process because we, we want to make sure we're exceeding customers' expectations with everything we do. Yeah, I'm always sort of curious about that. Like what causes that result? Like is it the cert process? Is it like what wall is hit where that sort of stuff is missed? So I appreciate you being candid about it. Yeah, and I'd say one of the things that was helpful for us with Starfield was our long working relationship with BGS, which you know well. Like if you go back to wow. original Xbox, like in what we've done with those teams, so the relationship between Todd, BGS, and our platform team 
was just stronger than it was with Harvey, not because of, and the team at Arcane, not because of anything other than just relationships, like we've just known them longer. Um, so Todd brought in, the AT, and the team brought in the ATG group early to start working on Starfield, and that's on us. Like, we should have done that with Arcane. Um, we should have helped them more in the development process, and also just made it clear that shipping a first party game has a different level of expectation, mm -hmm. that, um, that it's not always true that every team that comes into being part of a first party is, is aware of when it launches. Feel great about where we are with Starfield. You know, we put out the review, the review codes um, last week, so we're giving reviewers plenty of time to spend time with the game, and I think all of that's just a sign of the confidence that we have. You tricked me into breaking embargo, thanks That's right, yeah. that's right, you're done. No, no. <laughs> no uh, we, we do really appreciate um, people playing and giving us feedback, like the build that you have, you yeah. know, it's not actually the final build. Um, so we're always taking feedback and, and, and refining back in, and this is an important part of the process, so thank you for at least loading the game. Oh. <laughs> I played like an hour, but okay. you know, I got this whole, I got an interview with <laughs> Phil Spencer to plan for. Uh, another game here, though, that we got CBCD was uh, Forza Motorsport. Yes. You're showing off the Italian track. Yeah. I can't remember the name, name off the top of my head, but a uh, big improvement graphically from what we saw at Summer of Gaming. I am curious, though, what are your thoughts on how Forza Motorsport sets itself apart? I'll start with Turn 10. I think from the beginning of Turn 10, when that studio was formed, they've always been a technical showcase for us. A gentleman named Chris Tector is the, the tech architect for us there, um, and has just done a great job of getting, getting everything out of the hardware. I'm a huge motorsport fan. I've been from the time we launched that, so I've been playing builds and seeing the progress that uh, that they've been making. And I think you're right. Like Graphically, where they are right now, it's stunning the game, what they're doing with ray tracing and other things. Um, but I always love that they've turned 10 and be able to start with motorsport, expand to Horizon, which Forza Horizon's now kind of a, a top tier Xbox franchise. I think you can't argue about that. It's just like the number of players that game sit, builds, and their relationship with Playground and what they're doing with Fable. I mean, it's just been awesome to see how Turn 10, a studio that was literally just kind of homegrown within Xbox, has turned into such a force for us. Got any teases for Fable, seeing you brought it up? Um, I'll let the, the team, I'm, I was on. actually Nothing. on Project Ego, the first Fable that we launched, mm -hmm. which I find some humor in the code name was Project Ego with all the personalities <laughs> involved. But, uh, but it's nice to see the team kind of embracing what was Fable, the humor, the kind of choice and consequence and everything. So really looking forward to showing more. Yeah, uh, I really enjoyed the, the trailer you showed also Thanks. during the, the last reveal. Uh, but back, going back to Forza, you actually dropped the number. So is Forza Motorsport becoming a service platform or like what's what's with the change? Yeah, the team service platform, I, I hesitate a little bit because I think there's a lot of loadedness in Games like what, yeah, what that means. I think what we see with Forza is the evolution of the experience as, as much about the tech as it is tracks and cars. And we know that when people make an investment in the game, they want to make sure we continue to support the game. And in some ways, when you put a numeral on the end of the franchise, it instantly says, okay, well now you need to move to like Forza N plus one. And it's like, no, we want this to be a place that people feel like they can invest their time, they can invest their experience, and, and, and know that this is a place that we're going to be investing in Forza Motorsport for years to come. You've had a ton of reveals. You avowed was revealed. Yeah. Um, what else do I have on? South of Midnight. Per Perfect Dark, South of Midnight, yeah. Hellblade, then it was Sac Hellblade 2, then it was Sacrifice. Uh, can you tell us more about the rest of 2023 and beyond and sort of like what that's looking like for Xbox? Uh, what I can say is we're going to have more beats to talk about more of what we do because the content lineup is so strong. And I, I say that completely recognizing that 2022 wasn't so strong. Uh, but you know, we have our biggest booth here at Gamescom, and we have a huge presence. I think there's like 30 plus playable games on our floor. A lot of first party games. Towerborn's here, Aura's here, obviously Forza. It's so like, it's awesome to see the footprint that we have in the game portfolio from our first party, from partners, from Game Pass, all of it. So I think what you're going to see from us, where maybe the last couple of years we've been more on an annual in terms of when we talk about our games around, I still call it E3, around the E3 timeframe. 
this year we did Developer Direct in January, we did our showcase, we're here in a big, the biggest we've ever been at Gamescom, and you're gonna see more regular um, times to talk about our games because we just, the portfolio is deep enough that we can support that. Matt Booty promised us four. Yeah. Are you on track? For this year? Well, let's see specifically yeah. what he said. Yeah. Four Hi first party per year. We, we more than that this year. If we start with Hi-Fi, uh, Minecraft Legends, Redfall, maybe people don't want to give us credit for Redfall. I get it, but like I, but like I understand. Uh, Starfield, Forza. We just dropped Age Four console last night. Yeah. Awesome. I'm gonna play that. Um, and then going into next year, absolutely. Like we, we have talked about it as an aspiration. Now we talk about it as our plan. Okay. Got it. Big news, everybody. I don't know if you heard. Final Fantasy XIV is finally coming to Xbox. I got to go to the show. That it was, was awesome. really cool. Yeah. I've been covering that story for like a decade. Like yeah. Since, my, since I started at IGN. We're You've been a proponent for it. Yeah. I've won like that community is so welcoming. It's an amazing, awesome. amazing awesome. community. Being there with the, in the yeah. at the Final Fantasy Fan Fest thing was was awesome. The first time I'd ever been. It's just incredible. And and they're stoked about it coming to Xbox. And so is Yoshi, which is great. Yeah. 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 Now you hinted that other games. Did I hint become. or was it the CEO well, of Square that The hinted? CEO of Square. Okay. I just wanted to make sure who was clear on who was hinting. So where's Final Fantasy VII? Are we going to get 16? What does that mean? I recognize that when people buy an Xbox, they want to make sure the great games that they want to play are coming. And there have been, if there's any publisher out there where that hasn't been true, Square's one of the top profiles. So, like, Sarah Bond and I know, like, fly to Tokyo, have conversations, and we've spent a lot of time with Square. There's obviously business deals and relationships that will have to get worked through on certain games, but I'll say it was really great to have the CEO of Square and Yoshi there be, um, to just talk about their commitment to Xbox. Because I can say, like, I'm the head of Xbox, blah, blah, blah. But having the CEO of one of the third parties make a commitment to the platform, I thought was a really meaningful step. So you'll hear more. I'm not going to push them. Like, they're going to have to find their own rhythm. Uh, but it, having him make a commitment to Xbox was really important, both to me, and I've heard it from the community, to the community as well. You and 14 was more of a commitment. Yeah, yeah, you can tell me off the air, but we got to go right now. Phil, don't go anywhere. We're going to have a few more questions okay. for you. Thank you for watching, everybody, for more on all things gaming. Keep it right here at Gamescom with IGN.